Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're breaking down pneumonia from the patho to symptoms, interventions, and nursing care that you'll definitely see on exams. Now for my Simple Nursing members, download your study guides in the membership area to help this critical info stick when it matters most. Let's dive in. Pneumonia is a nasty infection causing severe inflammation in the lungs and causing the alveoli to fill with mucus, fluid, and debris. Now this extra fluid can make it harder to breathe. So the memory trick, just think P for pneumonia as P for a plague of inflammation inside the lungs that fills the alveoli with fluid. As you know, the alveoli is the place where gas exchange occurs. So normally we breathe oxygen in and carbon dioxide out. But with pneumonia, all this fluid, mucus, and debris fills the lungs and leads to impaired gas exchange, where CO2 can't get out and oxygen can't get in. This results in hypoxia from that low oxygen and acidosis from too much carbon dioxide. So just think carbon diacid since too much CO2 can put the body into acidosis and also impaired ventilation as the body tries desperately to get air through those fluid, mucus-filled alveoli. So write it down. Impaired gas exchange is typically the most tested nursing diagnosis for clients with pneumonia, which leads to ineffective breathing pattern as the body fights for air. Now for the signs and symptoms. Before you start memorizing, just think of the patho here. Again, P for pneumonia, just think P for a plague of infection inside the lungs. Now write down these top six most tested key terms here. Number one is altered mental status. We see restlessness, agitation, and confusion. These three are the earliest signs of hypoxia. So write them down because they are critical, since it can lead to deadly respiratory failure. Now the brain is very sensitive to oxygen. So these key words also cross over for other conditions where we have low oxygen in the brain like increased ICP, and even strokes. Now, number two is fever. Key term here, over 100.4, or 38 degrees Celsius. Always an NCLEX favorite, and that loves to show up on exams. Number three is a productive cough with yellow sputum from that infection. So again, pneumonia, just think that plague inside the lungs, which leads to number four, fine or coarse crackles upon auscultation from fluid and mucus-filled lungs. And then number five, dyspnea, that shortness of breath. Okay, now the biggest sign that pneumonia is getting worse is key term pleuritic chest pain with pleural friction rub. That must be reported to the HCP. It's described as a sharp chest pain upon inspiration or breathing in or upon coughing. Now, sometimes it's described as stabbing or burning pain inside the chest that increases upon inspiration or with the cough. Pleurisy is a major complication of pneumonia, as inflamed lung tissues rub together, sounding kind of like rocks rubbing together. So we call it pebble friction rub for pleural friction rub, or even sounding like sandpaper rubbing together, kind of like this. So Kaplan mentions, a pleural friction rub is described as a gradient sound or vibrations heard during inspiration and expiration. Now other signs, which are not really key, include unequal chest expansion, bronchial breath sounds, which are high-pitched sounds, and tactile fermentitis. This presents as more vibrations from a patient's back when repeating certain phrases and indicates denser or inflamed lung tissue. Now, a common NCLEX question here, a priority patient of who to see first. So, a post-operative patient with suspected pneumonia with a normal temperature and a SpO2 of 94%, becoming, key term here, restless and agitated. So, remember, the key terms there for hypoxia, restless and agitated, definitely mental status change. So anytime you see the word post-op or post-operative, you must think the worst case scenario for priority patients is acute respiratory failure, even if the temperature is not elevated 
and the oxygen saturation is not drastically low. So just look for the key terms, restless and agitated. Looking for more tips and strategies for questions like the ones we just covered? Well, our Simple Nursing membership includes exit prep lectures and thousands of questions across all nursing school and NCLEX topics. Now, don't let the NCLEX trick you here on select all that apply questions. Pneumonia does not include tracheal deviation. That's typically from tension pneumothorax. And it doesn't include hyperresonance, which is typical for a regular pneumothorax, that air inside the pleural space. And it's not dull resonance, which is typical for a hemothorax, that blood inside the pleural space. But it can also happen in fluid-filled spaces too, like a pleural effusion, a complication of pneumonia, which we'll get into next. So the memory tricks, think T for tracheal movement as T for tension pneumothorax. And the L's for dull resonance, think blood or fluid for hemothorax or pleural effusion. And then the H for hyper resonance, just think high air. Okay, now for some key terms that you must know for your pathophysiology course. The main types of pneumonia. First up is lobar pneumonia. This is described as an infection of one or more lobes of the lung. Now it's caused by streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria and a big complication is pleural emphyema. This is a collection of pus in the pleural cavity where bacteria migrates and creates sort of a fluid filled lung. It's one of the various kinds of pleural effusion which we call pleural effluid, that fluid in the lung which we'll cover in great detail in a moment. Now, in terms of manifestations and signs and symptoms, you should be sure to write this down. Number one, lobar pneumonia has a sudden onset. And number two, we hear rawls or rails, and described as crackles. This abnormal breath sound results from rumbling mucus within the lower airways, indicating that there's fluid inside the lungs described as a small clicking, bubbling, or even rattling sound. So we typically say rattling for rawls. And number three, a big key term here, is rusty colored sputum caused by exudates. Now it's just nasty lung butter that you would normally expect with any lung infection. It's basically pus-like sputum. Now to get deeper into the patho here, it is due to the presence of RBCs, those red blood cells, and WBCs, those white blood cells, which get caught up in fighting infection. Now moving on to bronchopneumonia. This is a diffuse infection in both lungs. The key term here is both lungs. And this is the key difference from that of lobar pneumonia. So the memory trick, think B for bronchopneumonia, as B for both lungs affected. Now for the causes, there's several different microorganisms here that cause this bronchopneumonia. And the key manifestation or sign and symptom is yellow or green sputum with a productive cough. So clients with bronchopneumonia present with this green yellow colored sputum due to the presence of multiple microorganisms affecting the lungs here. Now for the critical complications, these are priority for the NCLEX here. So pleural effusion, just think pleural E fluid. We see fluid that fills the pleural space, that space between the lung itself and the chest wall. Now this prevents full lung expansion, resulting in decreased gas exchange, so we get less oxygen in and less CO2 out. And this increased CO2 pushes the body into acidosis. So the key signs to write down are the four Ds. D for during inhalation, we see chest pain. D for dyspnea, that shortness of breath. D for diminished breath sounds upon auscultation. And then D for dull resonance on percussion. Remember, fluid filled is dull. So don't let the NCLEX trick you here. It's not hyper resonance as that's high air trapping. Now write down these four because these key signs came up a few times on select all that apply questions. Now the priority intervention for a pleural effusion is a thoracentesis to drain that fluid. 
the provider will stick a big huge needle into the lung itself to drain that lung fluid. So a big complication is a popped lung, or a pneumothorax, where air accumulates inside the lung space. Or even a hemothorax, where blood accumulates inside the lung cavity. So it's priority to report asymmetrical chest expansion and decreased breath sounds. Two big key terms for thoracentesis. Lastly, the most deadly complication is ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. We're talking deadly stiff lungs. So just think ARDS, we have hard lungs. And the key signs include, write this down, refractory hypoxemia. We're talking low PaO2, despite increased oxygen delivery. So the memory trick, just think the body is resistant to oxygen with refractory hypoxemia. And again, the first signs of low O2 is that altered mental status. And the top three again, number one is confusion, number two, agitation, and a big one for number three is restlessness. Now, we cover ARDS in its own full video, but again, these are the priority highly tested key terms. Now, another complication is septic shock. This can occur if infection gets severe, as the body releases chemicals into the bloodstream to fight the infection. In result, the total body becomes inflamed, which can damage multiple organs within the body itself, causing them to fail. And this is known as MODS, Multiple Organ Dysfunction Syndrome. Naturally, we see cardiovascular collapse with low blood pressure and low perfusion, that low oxygen. So the memory trick, just think S for shock as S for severely low blood pressure and perfusion. So the key signs to know for septic shock is hypotension. The key numbers here is systolic blood pressure below 90 and MAP, that mean arterial pressure, below 65. Anytime these numbers get low, we know we got to go. Go seek help from the primary care provider and report these findings. So write that down, huge NCLEX tip. Now some other findings is a cap refill over 3 to 4 seconds tachycardia, and early signs we'll see a fever over 100.4 as the body fights the infection. Now a late sign is hypothermia under 96.8. As shock worsens, we get more severely low blood pressure and worsen perfusion. So the core body temperature goes down. And we also see elevated WBCs and decreased urinary output. And the key to know for this is 30 mLs per hour or less typically means the kidneys are in distress. Now write these down. We cover it more in the full video for septic shock, but these are the most tested signs and always love to show up on select all that apply questions. Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. Now in terms of risk factors and causes, the greatest risk factor for pneumonia Number one, write it down, is advanced age. And the key number used on most exams is over 65 years old. Now, common exam questions love to give scenarios about an elderly population getting a respiratory tract infection or even the common flu that develops into pneumonia. This is called community-acquired pneumonia since it was caught inside the community. Now, don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Environmental exposures are not the greatest risk factor than advanced age here for pneumonia. And neither is nutritional deficit or even obesity. So always think here, advanced age over the key number 65 years old is the number one risk factor for pneumonia. Now another highly tested cause is for clients on ventilators who get VAP, ventilator associated pneumonia. This happens when secretions in the mouth and throat contain bacteria that cause pneumonia. So it's critical to, number one, reposition the client side to side every two hours. This helps to mobilize secretions. We do oral care and suctioning, again, every two hours, with chlorhexidine. These three key points are always on select all that apply questions for VAP. Now the best indicators for VAP is, write it down, positive sputum culture and fever and we also saw chest x-ray with new infiltrates. 
Now, don't let the NCLEX trick you here. Not lung sounds and not blood cultures. The best indicators here are diagnostics for VAP. Now, in general, prolonged immobility is another huge risk factor, since secretions are not mobilized and then get stuck in the body, as well as chronic diseases like COPD and clients who are immunosuppressed. But really a big one here is post-operative, or in other words, clients who have recently been out of surgery. We basically put the body to sleep with anesthesia, making the lungs low and slow. And now the alveoli are low and slow, or sleepy too. So we need to re-expand them to prevent collapse, that atelectasis, and prevent infection from settling in and getting trapped there. That's why we always turn, cough, and deep breathe, and always early ambulation after surgery, as well as use of the incentive spirometer to re-expand those closed alveoli. So a common exam question asks for the best indicator for VAP, that ventilator-associated pneumonia. And again, the best indicator is positive sputum culture. So once again, it's not elevated WBCs, and it's not even those blood cultures. So yes, those might be present too, but again, the best indicator for diagnosing VAP was the key term, positive sputum culture. So write that down. Now, speaking of diagnostics, we can always do a chest x-ray that shows infiltrates. We're going to see elevated WBCs, that white blood cell count, over 10,000. And once again, a sputum culture will be positive. So a big test tip here. Cultures are always taken first before starting antibiotics. So just think of the double A's. A for antibiotics are given after cultures are taken. This is done to better identify the organism causing the problem so we can choose the best drug to kill it. And another common exam question here. The best blood lab value shows effective treatment of pneumonia after IV antibiotics. And the key term was white blood cell count. So for this particular question, it's not a sputum culture and it's not lung sounds. This question asks for a lab value for the key term after IV antibiotics. This will reflect a killing off of the infection inside the blood. So the best lab value reflects a decrease in WBCs, meaning a decrease in the army or defenses the body needs to fight the infection, since the antibiotics kill the enemy invaders. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.